So let's do a recap here of our two plate boundaries and the forces that create them from inside of the earth. Um, looking at our two diagrams here, we can see our convection currents are there. We know from our discussion, the red is that warm rising mantle material created from the heat within the core. It rises up because it becomes less dense as it gets more and more heat from the core. The blue is, of course, the cool sinking material, and that is as it's further and further away from the core, its heat source, it cools down slightly. Remember, it's still thousands of degrees. Um, it's just cooler, becomes a little more dense, and sinks down. And so the motion of these different locations within the convection current create our two plate boundaries. Um, here on the first diagram, we're looking at the plate boundary where the two plates meet. The arrows at that location are moving away from each other. So this indicates it is a divergent plate boundary. And what we're looking at here then is the force of ridge push. Ridge push is describing the force created by the convection current with the warm rising separating material. The motion of the interior creates the motion of the outside crust to be separating as well, creating that divergent boundary. Here in our second diagram, we are looking at this boundary spot. That is where we see the convection current coming together. And if we could see a wider span of convection, we'd also see one here, right? It's important when we think about our convection currents that while they are moving differently, they do match up. Do you see that? So like the warm always rises in one place and the cool is rising in another. We aren't gonna see something like this, where a warm is passing a cool. So they always kind of show symmetrical patterns. There's that key word again, same on both sides. So red and red and blue on the outside, blue on the outside. This is not what we would be seeing, okay? So again, back to this plate boundary, we're seeing two convection currents coming together and sinking down, causing the crust, again, to do just that. This is, of course, then a convergent boundary and this is the force of slab pull again this force is describing the motion of the convection that creates the motion on the surface so slab pull is describing the cool sinking mantle material coming together and pulling down allowing the crust on the surface to move in that same way and sink down into the mantle. So here's what you had at the bottom of your explain two is you were looking for these divergent and convergent boundaries and then drawing in just two convection cells to match. So the key things that we're looking for to differentiate between our two boundaries um, here we have this small ridge that makes our divergent boundary where the plates would move apart. And here we have something called subduction zone where the crust is being pulled in because of the sinking mantle material. So looking at our picture, um, you most likely should be able to indicate the two convergent boundaries, right? We see one here where the crust is being pulled down and we also see one here where the crust is being pulled down. In terms of the divergent boundary, that's gonna be located here where we can see the magma coming up and the plates then, if we look at the arrows, right? I kind of covered them up. Here we have one indicating this piece of crust is moving this way, so that would still be this direction. And again, same thing, right? And so here we can see another arrow where the crust is moving these two together. So we're gonna label up, this is our divergent boundary, 
convergent boundary, convergent boundary, right? Boundary being the spot where the two plates meet. So yes, this piece of crust indicates convergent boundary, but we really wanna mark it at the spot where the two plates are, okay? So now that we have those located, we wanna draw in our two convection cells, reminding that we wanna use our colors, red and blue, to show warm rising, cool sinking in the correct locations. So if we look back, our divergent boundary is the location of that warm rising, and our convergent boundary is the location of the cool sinking. So I'm going to have my mantle material rising up at that divergent boundary, just like on our picture. It's gonna move underneath the crust, separating as it hits that bottom side of the crust. It's not gonna all come through the Earth's crust. It's gonna push up underneath. And then it's interacting with this plate as it's getting farther away from our heat source of the core. And that's where it starts to cool and sink back down, bringing that subducting or downward plate with it. It's interacting with the core, becoming reheated, and rising back up to create that divergent boundary again. Okay, so again, we, we drew in our two convection currents, um, and we have them, like we talked about, symmetrically, right? So we have the red coming up together and the blue sinking down together. If we were to see other convection currents happening, we would have, you know, one on this side with that cool sinking helping to push this plate towards the other one as well, right? If your diagram is looking something like this, we want to rethink that. That's not something that's going to happen. So the last step you have then is to work your learning target three, which is really similar to what we just did. You've got a diagram here where you're going to draw one convection current. One current, that's it. Okay, so look for the divergent, look for the convergent, figure out where the warm, rising, cool sinking would be, and then you can label where those forces are happening, just like we did at the beginning of this review. Then you have a short description you're gonna write in for convection. We did that in our notes, highlighted it up. Short definition for ridge push, thinking about what the motion of that interior material is and the boundary it's connected with. And same thing for slab pull. So you're describing that part of the convection and what boundary it makes, okay? So if you're feeling stuck, go back to that first diagram that we worked together in this review, kind of look at those colored arrows and use that to help describe if it's warm rising, cool sinking, and what boundary is it connected with.